They're, they're great data from uh, the Nobel Prize winning uh, neuroscientist Eric Kendel's lab, osteocalcin. Osteocalcin um, is known to provide support to neurons in a brain area called the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. The 150 to 180 minutes of zone two cardio per week will support overall brain health and function by way of improving blood flow. This is why people who have general cardiovascular issues also generally have issues um, with thinking. Uh, again, the excess weight issue is not just fat weight, it also is muscle weight. So this is also why bodybuilders are always dropping dead. A lot of them are just asphyxiating themselves in sleep, which is terrible, but that's a niche population. But for most people, not sleeping on your back and, and not carrying too much weight in the neck. Now, in terms of exercise, exercise during the day increases the rates of glymphatic clearance at night. So the reason I mentioned this is that these are indirect effects on glymphatic clearance and blood flow. The direct effects bring us to osteocalcin and the direct effects of exercise on brain function and health actually come from stimulation of the skeleton and load bearing exercise. And this is something that I think is underappreciated. When we do cardiovascular work, again, you support blood flow, lymphatic clearance, but osteocalcin is made by the bones. Wow, hormone that's made by bones that's released into the bloodstream and then goes to the brain and improves brain function. Why would the brain continue to support its own function if the body isn't being used? Excuse me, knows that the body is being used for load bearing work because osteocalcin is that signal. Again, the brain and body have to communicate and it's not like the body says, oh, I weight trained today or I did um, calisthenics today. No, it doesn't work that way. There's a hormone signal to communicate that to the brain. So this can be achieved a number of different ways. I actually think body weight exercises can be quite good, but a lot of non uh, dynamic, nonlinear movement. He talks about explosiveness, suppleness, um, but at a basic in basic form, people doing push ups, sit ups, pull ups, dips, um, you know, uh, jump squats, you know, basic load bearing um, behaviors. It's actually well established that cognitive function in aging can be assessed indirectly by grip strength. You have lower motor neurons, which are neurons in your spinal cord that control contraction of the muscles. If you're lifting weights, if you um, grip really strong because you're engaging the entire upper motor neuron to lower motor neuron system. So the idea is that people should be doing three to four days a week minimum. That could be weight training with machines or free weights, but it could also again be push-ups, pull-ups, dips, um, jump squats. The ability to jump and grip strength are highly correlated with cognitive function later in, in age. I think. Now, will doing a bunch of load-bearing exercise make you smarter? Probably not. In fact, we, we probably both know examples of people that do a lot of exercise but aren't, aren't um, uh, thought of as, as the swiftest still have to learn stuff and we talk about how to learn better um, but when you do this three to four days a week of resistance exercise you are providing a signal from the body to the brain there's some mouse data or studies published on, on mice showing that exercise cardiovascular exercise can um, increase the number of neurons in the hippocampus turns out that's true for mice but not for humans i wouldn't focus so much on adding new neurons to the brain it's more about getting the ones that you have to already be why so much of the work was done on cardiovascular exercises is very easy to make mice uh, run on a wheel. They love to run on a wheel, harder to get them to lift weights where they actually make a limb deficient so that they can, I have to hobble around on another limb to overload that limb. Nowadays, there's a beautiful paper published this last year showing that when people do resistance exercise, a little, what's called a micro RNA, um, which are little tiny RNAs, as the name suggests actually are released in little vesicles, little bubbles from the muscle and travel to the body fat and help facilitate burning of body fat. So resistance exercise has obviously effects on caloric burn that can indirectly support fat loss. So, so many reasons to both do cardiovascular work, 150 to 180 minutes a week minimum, and to do three to four days a week of resistance exercise. And it doesn't have to be excruciatingly hard or heavy. It does have to be um, effort but it pays off through this osteocalcin system.